verse Hebrews 10 25 because of how he states this this is particularly important in the end times not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more in other words exhort one another more and even uh, you know coming together more as you see the day approaching as you see the day approaching what's he talking about he's talking about the return of Jesus <clears throat> as you see the day approaching does anybody see the day approaching I think even the world's starting to go oh, something's up you know but, but believers they know they have the witness of the spirit they know they, they, you know, if they've been in the Word at all, they know how the Bible prophesies this is going to end up, you know, before, uh, before this is all over, you know, the rapture of the church, so forth, the Antichrist and the, you know, seven years of tribulation, hallelujah, and then Jesus, not hallelujah for that, but, but, but I mean hallelujah after that, Jesus and, and us, so we're coming back, and, and Jesus has taken over, and we'll rule and reign with him for a thousand years. And listen, all that secret gold they've been storing up, that gets to be ours. Not for our personal, you know, but for the kingdom, for the work of God. And, but anyway, so as you see that day approaching, there's a day coming where the rapture of the church is prophesied. And we, we don't have time to get into that, but uh, he said, as you see that day approaching, as we get closer and closer to the return of the Lord, we're to place greater and greater emphasis on the local church and assembling together in the local church. Now, this could also include other meetings, you know, you know, corporate meetings of other kind. You know, sometimes other ministers have meetings in, for the larger body of Christ, and that would include that. But how many of you know the main, the main assembling together is the local church? So we're to not forsake that and we're to specially emphasize it according to this verse as we see this day approaching. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why are we to emphasize that? Because I'll just be honest with you, you and I are going to need it more and more. Yes. Bible says in these days, 1 Timothy, or is it 2 Timothy? Yeah, maybe it's 2 Timothy. He says, I'll look it up. He says there in the chapter 3, in the last days perilous times shall come. It's 2 Timothy perilous times shall come in the, in the last days perilous times perilous times means dangerous times perilous times includes uh, you know all sorts of uh, you know we're in, in, in more and more people's thinking not, there's, there's a lot of folk that don't believe this way anymore so don't just go along with everything you hear on the news uh, I mean we're still the majority do you know we're still the majority but there's, still, there's more and more people in our culture that think we're the problem we're the bad people but the Bible says that people would be twisted like that. They call, let's, let's just go to First Tim, is it Second Timothy? Second Timothy chapter 3. Let's just look at it real quick. I want you to notice that the Bible said it would happen. Uh, let's go to uh, Second, Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 3. Notice verse 1. In the last days, know this, know this also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Men will be lovers of their own selves. <laughs> yeah. Covetous. Oh, yeah. Boasters. My goodness. That's where we got our president in trouble. Um, proud. I know some of you didn't like that. <laughs> That's the truth. Proud. Blasphemers. Boy, have you heard some blasphemy lately? Disobedient to parents. Woo. Unthankful. Yeah. Unholy. Oh, my. Yeah. Without natural affection. That's, that's homosexuality. Truce breakers. No, they don't keep their word. False accusers. Do Yeah. Pretty much every day. Incontinent, fierce, despisers. Notice, despisers of those that are good. They're fierce despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady. That word heady, if you look it up, means, I mean, they'll just fly off the handle. They'll just, they'll just, they'll just go into rage. Uh, High-minded, that's pride. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. That's called recreation, hobbies. Not, not wrong to have them, just, just don't love it more than God. Amen? Having a form of godliness, denying the power thereof. Yeah. That's talking about the, the denying the new birth, denying the baptism of the Holy Ghost, so forth and so on. From such, turn away. And we could go on and on. But I want you to notice, he said, that's the reason times will be perilous in the last days. 
Amen. When the Lord called me to the ministry, I, I say I was, I, I estimate I was probably about eight years old. He spoke to me and said, go tell my people I'm coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. Tell them to get ready. Yeah. Tell them to get, then he added that whenever we came to yeah. pastor. Yeah. The dream when I was a kid, go tell my people I'm coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. They called me to the ministry. It was a dream. I saw it and, and, and the Lord talked to me. Um, and then he said whenever we came to pastor that which I said to you before I say to you again go tell my people I'm coming soon and then he added this tell them to get ready well uh, tell them to get ready is stirring big time and I'm going to apply it to the local church this morning amen Amen. and so being ready is something that Jesus mentions over and over again if you read his parables you know, Matthew uh, the end, where he's talking about the end times over and over again he says be, be watchful and ready for I'm going to come in a time you think not you know and he talks about let not your heart in Luke 21 let not your heart be overcharged that means over, over, overwhelmed with surfeiting that means party spirit just living it up for the flesh overwhelmed with with partying uh, and drunkenness and cares of this life lest that day overtake you unawares in other words people aren't ready for it they're not ready they're they're caught up with you know life and all the natural affairs of life and he said drunkenness but you can be drunk on other things beside alcohol you can be drunk on sports drunk on You know, I enjoy hunting. You can get drunk on hunting. What does it mean drunk? Well, you're under the influence of it. When you're intoxicated, well, not you, but somebody's intoxicated, they're under the influence of that and under the control of it, and they do things they wouldn't otherwise do if they weren't under the control of that. And so people get under the influence of hobbies and all sorts of things, appetites of the flesh, and they do things they wouldn't do if they weren't under the, uh, under the control. Of anyway, but see, he's saying that keeps us being unaware of the return of Jesus. He's talking to Christians. Lest that day come upon you unawares. You say, this is a new members class. I know, just hold your horses. And so when he called me, he said, go tell my people I'm coming soon. Tell them to get ready. Amen get ready for what get ready for his coming get ready to stand before him now first john chapter 2 28 go over there real quickly i wouldn't be able to get out what the lord shared with me yesterday in probably four sessions so we're just going to share with the lord the highlights of some things Uh, first john chapter number 2 verse 28 did you find it 1 John 2, 28. Now, little children, abide in him that when he shall appear. Okay, now we're talking about the return of Jesus. That when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Jesus is coming. He said it's going to come to many. It's going to come like a thief in the night. You know, a thief in the night doesn't announce his coming. He doesn't want you to know he's coming. But now, now the Bible said God, God, the Bible said we don't know the day nor the hour, but 1 Thessalonians does say we know the season. And you can tell the season is coming upon us, not only by what's going on in the world, but just some things you have in your spirit. You can, you can tell there's, so he said, that's coming. And he said, when, when, uh, he said, abide in him that when he shall appear, you may stand before him, in other words, with confidence and not be ashamed before him. Before him means standing before him. You and I are going to have to stand before him. Every day we should live with that awareness. So before, when we come, when he comes and we stand before him, there's two ways we could stand before him. We could stand before him with confidence. I'm looking at this verse. Or we can stand before him with shame. <laughs> Ashamed of what? What we didn't do? What we did do. Amen. What God dealt with us about and we did nothing about. Being, a, being busy about the Father's business. What he told us to do. And there's a lot. I couldn't get into all of it this morning. The Lord gave me seven things that uh, applied that this applies to when I was meditating he got me up yesterday morning and uh, started talking to me about this but um, 
there's different things you and I can, can know we're ready by certain things the Word says. Amen. Being ready is something Jesus mentions over and over again, but He also tells us what that means. Amen. Amen. How many of you know it would be unfair for him to say, be ready for me to come, and he doesn't tell us how to be ready? I mean, that's not fair. God's a just God. He's a fair God. He doesn't ask us to do something, then we don't even know how to do it. So he tells us how, and, <clears throat> you know, he said to me, go tell my, people I'm t tell my people I'm coming soon. Tell them to get ready. In other words, I can't get them ready. I can simply tell them what ready looks like. Yeah. And they have to line themselves with the Word of God and be ready. I would if I could. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> but I can't. Amen. So I can have a role in this, and other ministers, we're not the only ones, but other ministers can have a role in this. And one of the roles we can play to, to help people get ready is present a clear message of what that looks like, what ready looks like. Am I on the right page? And so, uh, so uh, there's two ways we can stand before him. Uh, there's several things that the Bible says. I, I, I could go, I don't have time this morning, but I could go through seven of them at right now and talk to you about them. But being ready is mentioned by Jesus, but he tells us how to get ready. And he tells us we can do these things. All right? Now, being ready is something discernible. Uh, in the Bible. In other words, it's a definite condition that, that we know we're ready. That's how you can do it. Whenever He comes, you can stand before Him confidently. Because you know. You can't be confident about something you don't know. Isn't that right? So we can do this, this confidently. Amen? So we can know from the Word of God what that looks like. Otherwise, be ready. Just tell them, get ready. But nobody knows what that looks like. That's like a slippery pig. I mean, <laughs> it keeps getting away from you. Ring, 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 there it goes. Uh, I thought I was ready. <laughs> but so let's look at some things that the Bible says about this because we want to understand this. Now, we, we, from, from the way we uh, looked at this, Hebrews 10, 25 gives us some things to understand about being ready. Forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhort one another so much the more as you see the day approaching. Yeah. So the more the day approaches, do two things more and more. Exhort one another yeah. Yeah. and get together with yeah. other believers. Yeah. 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 What would we be exhorting each other about? Well, encouraging anybody about anything in the Word, yeah. but how many of you know he's probably emphasizing exhorting each other about get to church? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, come yeah. on. Yep. Yeah. All right. Amen. That's right. Exhort one another, and for, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. More and more as you get closer, in other words, get together with other believers. Amen. So that's saying the closer we get to Jesus' return, that we're to place a greater and greater emphasis on the local church or getting together with other believers. Amen. That's part of being ready for His return. Yes. Amen. Did you catch that? Yes, sir. That's part of being ready for His return. And um, it equips us to be ready for His return, yes. being in church. Yes. Amen. Amen. I know this is going to be a little different, but hang on with me. How many of you know Jesus in Luke 4, 16 had good church habits? Yes. It says, as His custom was, He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Now, the synagogue was the Jewish fellowship, but, but He had a custom in that day. That was their church of that day. He went to, he went to church on, when, when the church was open, He went to church. That was his habit. He had a good habit to do that. People say, I want to be like Jesus. Okay, right there. Be like that. Isn't that good? And so these are, these are important things the closer that we get to Jesus' return. Uh, it's going to, uh, church going is going to be a big part of positioning ourselves to meet the Lord. Because in church is where we find out how to get ready. You know, it's interesting to me that Jesus, I never thought about this until the Lord yesterday started talking to me about it. He said, and I, always, I actually always wondered about it. I thought it seemed kind of out of place. That he added the second part, tell them to get ready. 
when, he, when I moved into the second phase of our ministry, which is the pastoral office. I always thought that was kind of out of place. Now, I know there's more to it that, that our assignment is more to it than just the, the, uh, of the local church. But, but it, I've always thought it sort of was out of place how he added that second part. Tell them to get ready when he moved me into the pastoral office. I always thought it sort of seemed out of place until yesterday. I don't know, maybe you're quicker than me. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> pray for each other. How about, how about we just pray for each other? But uh, it's interesting. Go tell my people to get ready, that, that I'm coming soon, tell them to get ready. It was added in that second, the beginning of that second phase. So in Jesus' mind, pastoring involves getting people ready for the return of the Lord. Although that's, you know, every ministry is to prepare people. Don't misunderstand me. There's five-fold ministry, and they all should be helping people get ready. I'm an you know, evangelist. They're out there getting people saved to get them ready. Yes, sir. Come on. But, but there's more to it than getting saved. Yes, sir. Getting saved to get you the ticket yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. to be caught up. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you were ready to be caught up. Right. Right. Because apparently some are going to stand before him ashamed. And apparently, for God to tell, and others, me and others, I've been talking to more and more ministers. They're saying, the Lord's called me to do the same thing. And I can see God pulling the strings and pulling some ministries together here. And, and he's, more and more, I'm talking to them, and they're saying, the Lord's called them to do the same thing. Apparently, the, uh, the emphasis is turning more towards uh, getting people ready that he's coming soon. And the emphasis is in the local church, be in the local church. Amen. Now, I want to share with you be, be how being in the local church will get us ready for the return of the Lord. Amen. Regularly assembling together apparently is part of that. So we've got to understand the role of the local church and, uh, and, and standing to get us ready to stand before Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when uh, without, we, we see in the book of Revelation, for example, that whenever Jesus spoke the word to the churches, he gave a message to John on the Isle of Patmos to the, for the local churches. He spoke that word to the pastors and to, to spread that through the churches. Yes, that's right. Isn't that right? Yes. That's where he wanted his people to be because that's where he sent the message. Yeah. I mean, you got to send a message to where the people are supposed to be. Isn't that right? Or where they're going to be. And so that's, that's a revelation of where when Jesus, the head of the... Now, we each have individual rela relationship with God and fellowship with God. And he talks to us about things of our lives and the plan of God for our lives, so forth and so on. That doesn't always come to another. Maybe it's confirmed through other, others, maybe other ministers. But it comes to us directly. Yeah, and so, yeah. but there's other things that, there's, that Jesus is speaking to the whole body yeah. or to local churches. Yeah. Yeah that he's going to tell the, the leadership of that ministry or that church in order for them to, to spread it and, and to get the message out. Isn't that right? Amen. Are you still with me this morning? Yes, now, when the Lord said to me, tell my people I'm coming soon, tell them to get ready, that implies there's some that aren't ready. Right. 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 Yes, sir. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. I mean, I need to look at myself and make sure I'm ready. Being ready doesn't equal, apparently, being ready doesn't equal being saved. Notice there's some going to stand before him all right. In other words, they're saved, but they weren't ready. They were ashamed, 1 John 2, 20, 28. Am I making any sense? I know this is different. We've got to take some time and cover some ground here. But um, so when the Lord said, tell them to get ready, that means he knows some people won't be ready. Now, he can't be telling. He said, tell my people I'm coming soon. Tell them to get ready. That's his people, not the sinner. Right. Now, now, you can hear that wrong and think I'm saying don't preach to the sinner. That's not what I'm saying. We've got to tell the sinner Jesus is coming too. But he said, told me, tell my people I'm coming soon. See, I'm not called to be an evangelist, although I, we all have the ministry of reconciliation. We all are to get people saved. Waitresses, store clerks, you know. I love running with Brother Justin on the road. He flies or whatever. And then he's, I mean, he sits beside somebody. They're going to get saved yeah. if they're not. Yeah. Or at least they're going to hear about salvation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
But, uh, but the point is, my assignment is to tell the church, get ready. The body of Christ. Isn't that interesting? Tell my people I'm coming soon. Tell them to get ready. Well, are we ready? I don't know, Pastor. Maybe we better get into this then. Amen. Now, what does ready look like? There are so many things that he shared with me. I just want to emphasize one of them. If we, if we get through the one, we'll get to some others. But there's one that just keeps, just keeps working in me and just keeps working in me. And that is what he says in Luke 18. Go over to Luke chapter number 18. Luke chapter number 18. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter number 18. We're going to look at verse number 8. This is the parable. I'll give you the context. The parable Jesus gave of the, the woman that went to an unjust judge, avenge me of mine adversary. Remember that? There's so much misunderstanding. People think that he's saying God is an unjust judge. He's not saying God is the unjust judge. God is the righteous judge of all the earth. And he actually, Jesus ended up the, the, the story saying that God's, God will avenge his people speedily. In other words, not like that unjust judge. So there's, a, there's indication in every verse that the unjust judge is not God. We don't have time to go through that. We've gone through that in the past. But I want you to notice what he said here in verse number 8. Verse 8, right after he said, I'll avenge them speedily. Uh, uh, Verse number 8, I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Excuse me, that's in verse 8. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Okay, now here's, here's talking about Jesus coming. When he comes, is he going to find the kind of faith that this woman who was standing before an unjust judge uh, had to persevere and get what belonged to her? So when Jesus comes back, notice, will he find faith on the earth? The fact that he said, will I find it, means he's going to be looking for it. You know why I haven't found any new planets in our solar system? Or new stars in the universe? You know, some people do. They find new ones. Because I haven't been looking. <laughs> Y'all real quiet. You thinking, you thinking? That, that wasn't that deep. That was easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Some people are looking and they find them. I saw one the other day. Found something new. Some, some moon around some planet somewhere. Praise God. Name it after him. Praise the Lord. That's fine. But, um, but the point I'm making is he's looking. When he comes back, this is what he's looking for. Yeah, that's right. And if he finds it, yeah. guess what? Then, then we'll be able to stand before him, yes. not ashamed. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. All right, so let's look at this. Let's look at this. There's, there's, there's a lot we have to look at because this keeps stirring up in me. So he's going to be looking for it. And so if he's going to be looking for it and he doesn't find it in us, we're going to have to give an account for that. In other words, we're not, we'll not be ready to meet him because we don't have what he's looking for in us. Now, you might hear that and say, oh, my goodness. I, I, I don't, that sounds kind of hard. I, I do have faith. I believe in Jesus. Okay, but that's not all that there is to faith. Yeah, right. Just believing that Jesus died, rose again, and being born again. Right. You, every, every person born again will have that faith. Yeah. 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 But he's talking about, he said, when the Son of Man cometh, Will he find faith on the earth? Other translations say this kind of persistent faith. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. I know you think I'm just all over the Bible and don't understand how this applies to the local church, but just hang with me. Yeah. All right, so let me illustrate. When Jesus comes back, he's going to be looking for what? Faith. faith. Okay, you as a parent, if you tell your child, now I'm going to go to the grocery store you know, 15, 16, 17 years old. I'm going to go to the grocery store, and when I come back, we got some things we're going to do tonight. When I come back, I want you to have your homework done. Yeah. I want you to have your rooms cleaned, yeah. and I want you to have whatever, something else, the floor swept or something. Well, when you come back, 
and it's not done, are they ready to meet you at your coming? <laughs> huh? Uh-oh. <laughs> you're coming. Don't miss that. You're coming. The question is not whether you're coming. The question is, are they going to be ready to meet you? Or are they going to have to give an account for goofing off, playing video games, and worrying about the business of the household? Ah, some of us just had a revelation. So uh, you're, they're not ready to meet you if it's not done, right? And because, uh, because it's not done, they're going to have to give an account for that. Why is it not done? Why would the thing that he wanted them to be doing not, not be done? Because they didn't have the faith to act on it. All right. Uh, this is getting a little tight, isn't it? The question remains that Jesus asked, will he find this kind of faith when he returns? Go to 1 Timothy 4.1. Go to 1 Timothy 4.1. This is just a little different flow, but it's, it's what the Lord started talking to me about. Now, I couldn't get this all out today if I tried. But 1 Timothy 4.1 says, Now speak, the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, okay, that's us. In the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Notice he didn't say all. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with hot irons, hot iron, and so forth. Uh, he goes on and talks a little bit about that. I'm not looking at the specifics about the wrong doctrines and all of that in that passage, although there's a lot we could share. But I want you to see the first thing he said in the latter times: some, some, not all, not all, some shall depart from the faith. Okay, so when he comes back, mm -hmm. some, some. Yeah. will have this kind of faith. Because he didn't say all will depart. Right. Ah, right. Yeah. Some. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm just preaching your, your Bible, right? That's what your Bible says. Some shall depart from the faith. Not all, some. So Jesus said, when I come, will I find faith on the earth? Or this kind of faith that gets the job done. We'll look at this and get, understand it better. Whenever I come back, will I find this kind of faith on the earth? Paul answers that for us, or really the Spirit through Paul. The Spirit through Paul says, some will depart, but not all. Amen? So he'll find some of this kind of faith on the earth. So when he comes back, there will be a remnant, right? Getting the job done. There'll be a remnant getting the job done, because faith is how you get the job done. We're going we're gonna to dig into this more, and you'll understand a lot. Just give me some time, even though your brain's going, I don't know where he's going. Just give me some time. Everybody's giving me another, whatever, two hours, three, four, five, something like that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So he said, some, not all. So we've got the answer. There will be a remnant of people of faith when Jesus returns. I'm not going to get into how many that is. That's, that's, that's baloney. That's not my business. But, but notice he said some. Say some. Some. So the answer is yes, he will find some of this kind of faith on the earth. Right? Praise God. Now, you and I's job is to make sure it's us. Amen. When Jesus said, will I find this kind of faith on the earth, we ought to jump up and say yes. Yes. Faith getting the job done. Amen. Amen. So uh, there are two, two reasons that Jesus will be looking for faith when he returns and why faith is so important in the last days. Because Jesus said this is what he's going to look for. We need to make sure we have it for two reasons. First of all, you already read 2 Timothy chapter 3. Uh, is because in the last days the times will be difficult. You know, it says they're perilous times. Others translate say difficult times. All sorts of trouble in society around us. Isn't that right? You realize he's not talking about the church. 
when he says there'll be difficult times. Now, the, 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 it will try to come from the world against the church. But we're, we don't live in difficulty. We live in the finished work. And faith is not difficult. The times will be difficult, but not faith. Amen. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Ha. Yeah, somebody say ha. So it's obvious one reason that faith is important and that he's going to be looking for it when he returns is because faith is the victory. The times will be difficult and we're going to have to have faith to maintain victory. And thank God faith will keep you in the victory no matter what comes against you. Amen. Amen. So some will depart from the faith and get into doctrines of devils. Things will oppose the true church. And because of that, because of what comes against us, because of what people think, you know, people think good people are bad. We already read that. That puts a target on your back. Ah, pastor. What do you think God's been teaching us faith for the last couple of decades for? To keep us in the victory. This isn't a sad service. This is a service about how to keep the victory. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So things will oppose us. The times will be difficult because uh, even many of the true church won't be doing their job. Exercising their authority over the forces of darkness. We're seeing that right now. There are people that are genuinely born again, but they believe. Listen, listen, listen to me carefully. I, I had one come up to me and say, I was preaching the authority of the believer real strong one time in a church, and we were preaching at another church, we were preaching at, and a man came up to me because I was preaching real strong about the, the responsibility of the church to hold the things at bay that are trying to come against us in the nation, yes. getting into our government and oppress the church. Yes. Preaching real strong about it. Yes. You know, 1 Timothy chapter, three, chapter 2, verse 1, so forth and so on. And he came up and said, well, don't you know, though, brother, the Bible talks about the, the, the uh, tribulation. And, the, you know, it, tells, it says evil men and seducers are going to wax worse and worse and so forth and so on. And, and I, I, I didn't say it out loud, but I told a group of people. Some of you here heard me. Afterwards, I said, that kind of, to that, I didn't know that man. I didn't want to fuss yeah. with him. Yeah. Yeah. You could tell by looking in his eyes, he's a mess. Yeah. Come on. Doesn't have a pastor. Goes from church to church. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Come on. Come on. Yeah. But I told the group later, I said, people that think that way, yeah. they're part of the problem. Yes, yeah. sir. Just lay down and let the devil yeah. no. whenever we're supposed to be exercising authority yes. and praying, holding things at bay. We are the salt of the earth. We keep this thing from falling apart. Going to hell in a handbasket. If it wasn't for the church. Why? Why? Well, why? Why? Think about this. Why does the Antichrist, the Bible said he'll appear in his time. Why doesn't he appear in the church age? He's going to appear in his time. Because the church will be gone, which bring, allows him to come on the scene. It's the church holding him back. But see, that kind of thinking is just like, well, you know, it's all going to hell in a handbasket. In other words, you know, I guess we all dig our caves and go, go store up food and stuff like that. Baloney. Come on. That part, that thinking is part of the problem. Anyway, this is not a political rally either. <laughs> but I'm just simply saying, listen to what I'm saying. It says these things will come against us, but faith is the victory. Well, I find faith on the earth. Well, I find people exercising authority over these things, holding these things back. Anybody still glad you came? So, uh, our job is to hold these things back and to spread the gospel. Isn't that right? Amen. Because wickedness in the world, the Bible said evil men and seducers wax worse and worse. I know the Bible says that. But the Bible says the church goes from glory to glory. We all be holding us in the mirror of the glory of the Lord, changed from the same, in the same image from glory to glory. We're going from glory to glory. Yes. The Bible prophesies whenever we leave here, we will leave here a glorious church. Yes. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Yes. 
Yeah. All the ladies said hallelujah. hallelujah. No. no, he's not talking about physical wrinkles. He's talking about spiritual, you know, defilement of fleshly things and sins and so forth. He actually says that. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy oh. and without blemish. Talking yes. about right. clean spiritually. Yes. Yes. Be, and, uh, before him in love. Yes. He's coming for a glorious church. Yes. Not a defeated, weak, you know. The great cloud, whenever Jesus comes back, is not going to be the dust we kick up running out of our caves. Come on. Come on. The cloud is going to be the glory. That's right. Amen. We're going from glory to glory. Evil men and seducers are going to wax worse and worse. But we're going to see glory to where people bounce off. They try to come against us. Fall dead. See, you look at the, the glory in the early church. Herod rose up yeah. Yeah. trying to persecute yeah. and was eaten of worms. The glorified church will be the church that people know don't touch them. Yeah. Don't touch them. Yeah. Don't touch them. Yeah. Right. Amen. You'll be split up and carried away seven ways from Sunday. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's the word. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going from glory to glory. Even men and seducers are wax worse and worse. So they're going to be more, they're going to be raging more. They're going to be, you know, <laughs> think it's their duty to stop us. Pastor, you're making me afraid. Listen to the word. This is the victory. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory over all this. Jesus said, there not be a hair of your head will perish. Woo. Some of you that are going bald ought to claim that one right there. <laughs> no, not you. That's in the context of the last days. Jesus said that in the context of the last days. Not a hair of your head shall perish. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. So... Uh, this is, this is uh, what faith is for in these last days. Don't think faith is just for you to ride a cloud and, you know, or ride your Mercedes around. Thank God for nice blessings. But it's to live and make it through the last days. Not just make it. Thrive. Thrive. Succeed. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the times will be difficult. Wicked people will stir up stuff. Uh, so that's the reason some extra things are going to come against people in the end times that believers in other days maybe didn't deal with as much. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But that's why God has been teaching us faith for all these decades. He's getting us ready for what we're getting into. Don't make me afraid, Pastor. Well, I'm not trying to. I'm trying to keep you living aware of how, the, how to win the victory. Hallelujah. Whatever effort is necessary for us to walk by faith because it takes effort whatever effort is necessary is nothing compared to what will overcome you in unbelief in unbelief you say well that's you know walking by faith that takes you know feeding myself going to church you know it takes well that's nothing compared to what you're going to experience in unbelief being weak amen do you know, we wouldn't have thought, 10 years ago, we wouldn't have thought that a Christian would be facing, like today, be facing losing the right to work just for their convictions. It's time for faith, <laughs> you know? It's, been, it's always been time. The just shall live by faith. But listen, in these last days... I mean, God's getting ready to do some show up, show out miracles. So, uh, walking by faith, nah, nothing. Nothing compared to being in unbelief. Faith is the victory. Amen? Faith, unbelief, faith, faith is your victory. Unbelief is your defeat. That means succumbing to all that's coming against the church in the last days. Faith allows you to control circumstances. Unbelief gives circumstances and demon powers who propagate them control over you. So that's one side of faith. I said there's two reasons why faith is important in the last days. Now, now let's look at the other side. 
Faith isn't just for living in victory, although we just described that is one thing it's for. But it's down here, you know, in our personal lives and so forth. Because uh, this is one thing I've thought about in recent times. I, I, you know, I have to make sure I'm thinking right, and I, I get a hold of myself and look in the Word. It's like, the, let the world rage and go on, you know, do whatever they're going to do. I got faith. I know how to live in victory. Okay, that's part of what faith is for, but that's not all that faith is for. It's just for us to make circle our wagons live in victory. Are you out there? There's another side, and the Luke, con- Luke 8, 8, uh, 18, 8 context is the other side. It's the kind of faith that persists in end times to get the plan of God done. Now, James makes this real clear in James 5. Yes, that's the rain, the outpouring of the Spirit. Brother Joel Siegel was talking about this. The rain, the outpouring of the Spirit, the harvest. And then what? The return of Jesus. And that's what he's waiting on. Isn't that right? The the husbandman, God the Father, waits for the precious fruit of the earth. That's not talking about they're harvesting corn now. That's not talking about that. He's talking about souls of the earth. That's right. That's what he's waiting on. He's waiting on that harvest. There's prophesied a last day harvest. Yes, Amen. I said there's prophesied a last day harvest. Yes, and a latter rain. Yes. The early rain was the day of Pentecost, started on the day of Pentecost and went on for a while. And then it phased out. But then the Bible prophesies the latter rain. That's right. The latter rain is at the end of the church age. The former rain was at the beginning. The latter rain is at the end. And that's the one, if you look at the way it's set up, the way it happens in Israel, the latter rain actually matures the harvest. And it gets the harvest ready to reap. And the rain is a type of the outpouring of the Spirit, right? Faith, our faith is not just for us to have victory, it's to get all that. Does that make sense? So that's the other side of this. On one hand, the kind of faith that is necessary to have, uh, to receive all the promises of God in the last days is important. God doesn't want you just to have, you know, faith for the rain and harvest and getting people saved, but you live broke, busted, disgusted, defeated in your mind, tormented, vexed, and, you know, your family falls apart and all that. There's, there's two sides to this. Isn't that right? And so the scriptures tell us in the last days there'll be perilous and dangerous times. The, it, it's, only, uh, it's only the kind of faith that persists and won't quit that enables us to live victorious on the one side, overcome and live in victory in this life. But on the other side, the purpose of our faith in these last days is enable us to move with God in what He's doing. Yeah. Talking about the harvest, the rain, and so forth and so on. Everybody say, we're moving with God. In these last days, we're to move with God. Faith moves with God in His plan. Isn't that right? Not with the wickedness of this hour. Maybe somebody can turn some air on. Is everybody else hot? Is it just me? Faith moves with the plan of God. Not with, listen to me, not with the wickedness of the hour. Get disconnected from the wickedness of this hour. I don't mean live in, a, live in a bubble where you don't know what's going on. Christians ought to be aware. Don't be ignorant, you know, not unaware. But yet right on the other hand, disengage from the 24-7 news cycle. You know what I'm talking about? Because we're not moving with the wickedness. We're moving with God because we're people of faith. Tell your neighbor, that's us. Jesus asked the question, will I find faith? Yes! Yes. In other words, what he's saying is, will I find people when I come back who are moving with my plan? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so it's only that kind of faith that will uh, be getting the job done down here. People of unbelief will not be reaping the harvest. They will not be moving with the Spirit. They will not be receiving the rain. They will not be getting people saved. They'll be going, we're all doomed, and we're going to run into a cave and store up food for a year, you know. That's unbelief. Thank you for your enthusiasm. 
Well, Pastor, this is a new member Sunday. What's that got to do with the local church? I am so glad you asked. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So Jesus said, will I find this kind of faith that moves with my plan? Now, James chapter 5. Go to James chapter number 5. Everybody's still here, right? Uh, it's a little, a little bit foundational today to get the, get the foundation laid to say what we need to say here, but we're getting there. James 5, verse 1. Go to now, you rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, your garments, is, garments are moth-eaten, your gold and silver is cankered. The rest of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped treasure together for the... Uh-oh, this, refer, this refers to the last days. Oh, Jesus. There's been some things, some injustices done. Okay, verse 4. Behold, the hire of the laborers, that's the wages, of the laborers who, are reap, who have reaped down your fields, which are you have kept back by fraud, crieth, and the crieth of them with, which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. That's not Lord of Sabbath like the seventh day of rest. That's Sabaoth, head of the angelic army. If you look the word up, it's a different word. And so he's got his fighting hat on here. He's saying, I'm coming with angels to get back what belongs to the body of Christ. The reapers. See, it's a parallel. He's using a natural illustration to illustrate us in the last days reaping the harvest. Well, how do you know he's talking about us reaping the harvest? Well, keep on reading. You have lived in pleasure. You're talking about these wicked men. You've lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. You have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed the? That's the righteous. And he does not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren, under the coming of the Lord. Okay, and now he's talking about the end times and the coming of the Lord. And he's tell, telling us, be persistent. Patient means persistent. To the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman, that's Jesus, or that's actually God, waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. Have we heard this verse lately? Brother Joel was talking about this. Waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he received the early and the latter rain. That's what we were just talking about. There's a latter rain prophesied. The harvest brings in this latter, this, this latter rain brings in this harvest. Right, we're just laying some foundation. We've got to say some things. We're getting there. So notice this is all last days. And notice he exhort he, he actually he actually actually specifies and spells out what Jesus was saying when he used that illustration of that unjust judge and that woman saying being persistent and finally getting what belonged to her. And he said, this is what I'm talking, basically James is saying, this is what I'm talking about, what kind of pers persistent faith is necessary and what that persistent faith will get. Yes. Be also patient, talking to the believer. Look at that, verse 7. Do you see that? That means persistent. Be persistent in what? In faith. Therefore, brethren, under the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband when waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. And so he's talking about being persistent to get the harvest, to get the rain. Yeah. 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 That's good. Yeah. And to move with God's plan, yeah. even though the devil's wanting to usurp this plan. Yeah. Take us yeah. right, right past the harvest and take us right into the great tribulation. No. He's not going to get it done. No. He's not going to get it done. Amen. We're going to have the harvest. And, and it's not going to happen through people who are not persistent in faith. Amen. Isn't that right? That's right. There's a whole lot of people that don't believe there's an end time harvest. This verse says there is. And Jesus said he's looking for people that believe it and persist in faith. Amen. 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 We're to hold back the forces of darkness who want to get the tribulation on right now. Hold that back and, and move with God to get the plan of God done. And then we'll get out of here and the devil can get it on. We're not giving in. We're not backing up. We're not saying, well, the devil's taking over. Oh, what are we going to do? No. We're moving with God because we're moving by faith. Hallelujah. So he's telling us to endure in faith until we get all the promises, including, including the latter rain. Isn't that good? And the end time harvest, the outpouring of the Spirit that brings in the souls of the earth. And what happens after that? Then Jesus can come back. He's waiting on us. Isn't that right? So the judgment will fall on the, those who held back what belongs to the reapers. Do you see that? Huh? And a transfer of what belongs to us will come. Yes. Amen. Yes, it will. Amen. Yes, it will. Amen. 
That's in your Bible. I said, that's in your Bible. Hallelujah. Those that opposed and oppressed the reapers, Jesus is coming back to catch away those who are born again, but he's also coming back. Are you with me? Yes, sir. To remove us from the tribulation, but also bring judgment on those that, are, that oppressed us. Yeah. Opposed us. Hallelujah. The word avenge there in that passage in Luke 18, four times I believe it was, the, the woman went to the unjust judge. Maybe we should have read it. Some, I think most of us are aware of it, right? She said, avenge me four times. Avenge me of mine adversary. The word avenge means vindicate, retribution, or redeem from oppression. Say, that's what Satan's doing through wicked men yeah, yeah. in these last days. They are shutting down people who are preaching, yeah. knocking them off of social media platforms. Yeah. I, I even heard a Christian TV station, this is actually old news, but uh, knocked off all the faith preachers, hmm. had to start their own network, yes. and did. Thank God, because they got faith. Well, Amen. Faith to get the money to do it. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. There's a lot of junk going on out there. But listen, they can't overcome one ounce of the devil, cannot overcome one ounce of faith. It's his kryptonite. He cannot do it. God can't do it. But through wicked men, Satan in these last days are seeking to, is seeking to oppress the righteous. Do you know Satan hates you? You represent God. You represent God's plan. You represent God's will. You're full of God, full of the Holy Ghost. You think like the Word. You think, you think different. You don't think like the world. That's right. You're not easily deceived. You don't believe the lies that you hear. Nope. Which the devil loves to propagate lies and get everybody to see. But you don't fall for it. Yeah. He hates it. But that's his problem. I said, that's his problem. Not my problem. He can rage and do all he wants. In the name of Jesus, I take the shield of faith. And say, not here, not on my watch. Yeah, oh, I'm having a good time this morning. Pastor, what's this got to do with the local church? This is where you get your faith built. So Jesus asks the question before the Son of Man comes. In other words, comes to redress the wrongs committed against his church and vindicate us. We can stand in faith and have the victory the whole time we're down here, but payday is coming for those that kept bringing stuff against us. We don't wish it on them. We wish them be saved. How many of you know Saul killed Christians and his name was changed to Paul and, and was blood washed and came on in and didn't pay a, a, a price for that. That's what we want for everybody. But if you want to keep being yield, yielded to the devil and you want to keep being used of the devil, you've got to deal with God. You want to come against the church? You're not just coming against the church. You're coming against God. And there will be a payday. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> but see, when, before he comes uh, to redress these wrongs that are committed against this church, he's looking for the kind of faith left on the earth that stays in victory and keeps it from happening. Amen. Hallelujah. And perseveres with the job God called us to do down here until he says, all right, that's it, and takes us out. Yeah. Then all hell breaks loose yeah. to destroy them. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You know, you've you got to divide between the, the wrath of the enemy and the wrath of God. The second half of the tribulation, the, the first half is just the enemy raging. The second half of the tribulation is the wrath of God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's one thing for the devil to be mad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hallelujah. So as long as we're here, 
The answer to Jesus' question is, will I find faith? Yes! Yes! Yes. yes. Getting the job done. <laughs> so we've got to have faith to live in victory. We know that. Faith to exercise authority over these forces. We know that. But we've got to exercise faith to get the job done. Hallelujah. There is a side that we don't talk much about. We talk about living in victory while we're here, and rightly so. We need to really hear that, hear that, because there's so many people that don't, don't think, you know, they kind of think we're going into defeat or something. Uh, no, the church is, is, uh, the church is in authority down here. Amen. And our remnant still believes that. Yes. And prays and believes God and exercises that authority. And right. Prays things out under the anointing of the Spirit and so forth and so on. But... <clears throat> But we've got to recognize there's more to it than just us living in victory. We live in victory. You know, it's like you read the story in the Old Testament of God sending, who was it, Nehemiah back to rebuild the wall. They had a, they, they had a, a tool to rebuild the wall in this hand and a sword in this hand. You ever read that? Because the enemy's right there trying to keep them from rebuilding the wall. So you might put a block up, put some cement on, and have to turn around and go, Ugh. Come on. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not talking about physically attacking people, so don't, don't go out of here. I'm talking about work dealing with demon forces. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. <laughs> I thought I better say that for all the gun-toting ones, um, <clears throat> which I, I believe in it. I just, buy, I just bought more. But, so, but my point is, that's not where we're at. Because there's been times you forget in the flesh, you want to go, well, okay, let's get this on. Come on now. Let's, let's see who wins, the wimps or the gun-toters. Let's see who wins. <laughs> No, we don't deal with it that way. We deal with it in the spirit. Well, I digress. I'm off. Praise God. So we're going to live in victory while we're down here, but that doesn't change the fact Jesus is coming back. And pity the fool that he has to deal with. I said pity the fool. It'd be good for them to get saved right now. Amen. The rapture is our deliverance from the wrath that is to come. Go over there to 1 Thessalonians. I, uh, let's look in the uh, third. That's where is this? Is it 2 Thessalonians? Thought I had it right in front of me. I'm not seeing it. Well, there's uh, verse 9 of chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians. For God hath not appointed us to wrath but obtaining salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. But it says, I think it's Thessalonians chapter 3 somewhere, or 2 right in there somewhere, it talks about uh, delivering us from the wrath that is to come. There's coming a day that vengeance, it's going to be settle up day. Everything that the devil stole that belonged to the church is coming back in. Now we are to live in victory until that day. Amen. Amen. But there's a day. All the accounts are going to be opened. All the books are going to be opened. You did this to my people. You held this back from my people. You persecuted them here. Persecuted them there. It's settle up day. You know not all judgment falls right now. <laughs> Quiet in here, isn't it? Not all judgment falls in this age. But it will all fall. Amen. He will bring Ecclesiastes, the last verse in Ecclesiastes, he'll bring every work into judgment. Woo, somebody said, that person got away with that. Oh, honey, oh, honey, no, no, you didn't get away with it. <laughs> so I'm going to be looking at me real funny. <clears throat> now, why am I sharing all this? How does this relate to the local church? How does this relate to the local church? Do you remember 1 Thessalonians 3.10? Let's wrap this up. 1 Thessalonians 3.10. Remember the verse we have always shared. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 3.10, I long to see you. Uh, why is that not the right? Is it 2 Thessalonians? Is it, why is it not showing up right in my Bible? Oh, yeah, praying and seeing that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Notice that. See your face 
and perfect yeah. what is lacking. We've, we've brought this up many times, yes. especially in new members' classes. Paul said, he's writing under inspiration of the Spirit of God. He's writing the book of Thessalonians, which faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word, right? Yes. Yep. He's writing the Word. He's writing inspiration of the Spirit, writing the Word to them to build their faith. But he said, I long to see your face. In other words, he's writing this and sending this letter. He didn't come and present it. He said, I long to come there myself, see your face, and perfect what's lacking in your faith. Notice he was saying them just sitting on their own and reading the Bible. This turned out to be the Bible, right? At that time, it just seemed like a letter, but it was inspired. God put it in canon of Scripture. God said that they can sit at home and read it, and that wouldn't perfect their faith. Uh, that, that, that's not wrong. That's not saying it right. It wouldn't complete the work yes. of perfecting. How I many of you know we can get a lot out of the word ourselves? Yes. But he's still, still saying there's a completion. The perfection means the completion when I come face to face. And God uses people. Remember, the Bible calls Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes. Here, Paul is saying he uses me. Paul was referring to himself as a minister. He's saying Jesus is using me. Yes. Jesus, as the author and finisher of your faith, is using me to do that. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. So, well, I just want to, you know, just read books and read my Bible. I don't go to church. Then you can't get what this verse says is yours. Where somebody is under the anointing sees your face to perfect what's lacking in your faith. In other words, they, whenever the, there's an operation of the Spirit in the Bible, it's very plain. You can see it. I, I could give you four or five scriptures right now where Jesus saw the, here's one, saw the multitude and was moved with yes, compassion, yes. and he yes. moved with the Spirit yes. to meet the need. Yes. There's an operation of the Spirit that doesn't work on the Internet, yep. on TV, yeah. sitting at home. Yeah. It was when his eyes fell on him yeah. yes. that something moved in him to answer. Yeah what was being revealed to his spirit that they needed. And when Christians stay at home or don't make the local church important part of their spiritual habit, they miss that blessing. So their faith can't be perfected. Two, live victorious in the last days. And two, number two, to get the job done in these last days. It's all about faith. Yes. Yes. So it's all about faith. Amen. What about love? Yeah, we love by faith. Yes. You got to be fed the Word of God along that line to be successful and walking in love and not flying off the handle. Right, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> you get to church and you get calmed down. Oh. All right, I'll forgive them. <laughs> Till you got there, you just never thought about it. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah. You all know what I'm talking about. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Praise the Lord. So that's how that relates uh, to uh, the last days. That's why he said, come together. It all comes back to, you know, Hebrews 10, what is it, 25? Where it says, as the day approaches, come more and more together. Why? Keep your faith sharp. Keep your faith strong because you're going to need it to live in victory and you're going to need it to get the job done. Get the job done. You know as well as I that corporate effort is a lot more, whether it be in natural things or spiritual things, is a lot easier than just one person trying to do it all. Isn't that right? So God's plan is that we come together in faith. Unite our faith together. Hear what God's saying. See, hear the Word of God. Feed our faith. Build our faith. And then take those assignments that He's given to us and go after them corporately. Yes. Yes. Amen. This assignment for this church is to reach, there's more beyond this city, but, uh, you know, the, the, the eastern Iowa area. Washington to Waterloo to Marshalltown to the Mississippi. That's the word that the Lord gave me. From Marshalltown to, I mean, from Washington to Waterloo, I was driving across the Illinois border to come back into Iowa. I was over there in a meeting, and I heard those words. I was praying in the Spirit. He said, talking about the church here, he said, it's from Marshalltown to Mississippi and from Washington to Waterloo. Washington, the way he said it's reverse. Washington to Waterloo and from Marshalltown to the Mississippi. You look at that, that's about a 50-mile radius. That's our assignment. Take this gospel, not a watered-down version. 
the gospel of faith, victory in Christ, who we are in Christ. How, how good would I get that done on my own? How much better can we do it getting all together? Sending it through live stream, sending it through, you know, more and more people liking our Facebooks and, you know, whatever, all that stuff. It's, thank God for staff. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to get the job done. So we're going to get the job done. Praise the Lord. And, and not be ashamed before him. That's one of seven. <laughs> Did you get anything out of that? Yes. Hallelujah. 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 You know as well as I do, it says, Satan is the roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Yes. He wants to knock out people of faith. Yes. Just get them not to use it, and he can knock them. He said, Satan's walking by, he's looking for somebody to devour. Resist him. How? steadfast in your faith oh there's that persevering faith again how much more is he trying to do that in the last days yeah you know what I'm talking about he can't though just devour anybody he chooses it says he's looking for whom he can that implies he has to walk by some people because he can not why they go to the wrong church you didn't get that from the devil's perspective they go to the wrong church I can't take them out with disease they go to the wrong church actually it's the right church but he thinks it's the wrong church they resist me steadfast in faith I try to get them offended and they resist me steadfast in faith so they're going to get the job done. They're going to get the job done. They're going to get the job done. That's right. Mr. Devil, put it in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> Shout amen, somebody. Stand up with me. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 There's a lot of folk. They think their problem is this, the problem is that, their families, their problem, their finances are their problem. No, their problem is they're weak in faith. Or let's rephrase that. Their problem is they don't go to church. Nobody sees their face. Amen. The, the people's answer surprises them when we tell them. But they don't make, the devil doesn't want them to make the connection. Amen. Where are you going to get all this? You're going to go to church. Well, I can do all this just reading my Bible at home and so forth. Well, there's, there's, we shared one side. There's, there's, there's more to what we even had time to share. But you know as well as I do, just like a child, we said it in the first session, who grows up without a parent, without somebody speaking into their life, they don't get near as far. They... they they have to learn a lot of things the hard way. Did you get anything today? Thank God for God's plan in the local church. Thank God for God's plan in the local church. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and thank Him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is something that I wrote. The Lord was talking to me. Some today have realized that faith is the way we overcome the enemy and have gone about to develop their faith without being a vital, active part of a local uh, church. He's, uh, uh, just the Lord's sharing this with me. Um, they don't show up every time the doors are open but part and are not part of a good local church. They wonder why they are yet to be successful at standing against the enemy because their minds are partly renewed. They think they just need more faith. They think it's a faith problem when actually it is a face problem. The one God has anointed to see their face and perfect what's lacking in their faith can't see them. Every pastor knows there's people, if I could just get them to listen. Not to us, but to the Word. 
just get them to listen and sit long enough and get still shut their mind down long enough to, to listen what the word actually says we could get it we could help them any pastor that's worth his salt loves people and wants to see that but you can't make them do it so it's, it's tough you watch them get kicked from pillar to post it's tough you love them you don't want to see that happen to them but, but see they, the devil wants to keep them blinded to what the real need is well the real need is this and this and this no the real need is that you sit down <laughs> I know it sounds like it's I don't know self serving I don't know what people think when we say that but, but it's if it was me or if it was somebody else the real need is sit down listen hear what the word says renew your mind build your faith develop your spirit learn not to follow the flesh learn to follow the witness of the spirit all these things it's preparing you to be a laborer in the end times moving with God rather than moving with the enemy I'm, I'm in on that praise the Lord that's our assignment 19 whatever it was what year it was back in the 80's walking out, out getting people saved on the streets of Tulsa ministered to a drunk man he threw away his alcohol sobered up right in front of me let him he had already been saved let him do repentance and I told him where to get the church bus and so forth to come Sunday I walked away and the Lord spoke to me he said he's going right back to where he went right back into that den of sin where he he, he told me where he lived and all the sin there going right back into that he won't catch the bus on Sunday and he'll be back into sin and back into bondage I cried out to God I said God you know in other words that's not what I'm out here for I'm out here to help people he said that's what's going to happen and my heart reaching out to him to help people in that area when, I, when my heart opened up clunk down into my spirit came a gift to teach people how to live victorious it was a teaching gift I can just like I I can almost feel it in my physical body when it dropped in at the time I didn't know what it was but I just said right out loud I'm going to spend the rest of my life when I heard when that came in I'm going to spend the rest of my life helping people live victorious not just get saved and bare knuckle it in and all beat up busted and broke and disgusted anybody know what I'm talking about <laughs> and that's when I'm teaching it so that's, that's our assignment get people ready get people ready live victoriously and move with God in faith